um, virtual rooms? Yes. Yeah, so the House of Friendship is, um, in fact, I've got it on my computer now, working really hard on that. Karen McDaniels is doing a fabulous job on that. i just curious, show of hands, how many of you are going to break on? One, two. Yeah. Okay. Yay. Uh, so, yeah, do drop by the house or, you know, please volunteer with Karen McDaniels. I know, Joe, you are. Scott, I don't know if, if you'll be able to do that. Um, and they will have a link to Expo. Um, there is an online, uh, it's not a virtual house of friendship with Rotary International. It's just a website. <laughs> it's just kind of like a plug and fill website. So we're just pointing everyone over to Expo. Okay, so just for, for, for clarity on that one, last year many people were involved with, we had different booths in, on a virtual expo platform for the various task forces. This year there's Rotary's changed the platform, they're now just doing a website and we're going to, to, to channel everyone across over to the, the 3D environment that, um, that Klaus and uh, the team have been working on. If you're involved with other teams, we are getting other RAGs involved in that as well. So. Yeah, so still hoping to generate some leads of people that haven't come across the work that's being done. Mm -hmm. All right, so now, Doug, over to you for the introduction, please. Yes, um, we'd all like to welcome uh, Natasha Lance, who is the Executive Director of Community Outreach and the Community Grants Coordinator for the Center for Nutrition Studies Whole Communities Program. Natasha lives in a late 1800s log cabin lucky her, on 40 acres in Michigan's Upper Peninsula near Lake Superior, and also spends a good amount of time in Colorado Springs, Colorado. She is a whole food, plant-based lifestyle guide and a 2018 graduate of CNS's Plant-Based Nutrition Certificate Program. Natasha uses her experience as a community organizer, farmer, food truck owner, social worker, uh, agriculture policy activist, and food educator to help make the world a better place. So welcome, Natasha, and I can absolutely say that the Center for Nutrition Studies whole f food program is making the world a better place. So welcome. Well, thank you so much for that very generous and kind introduction, Doug. It's been a pleasure working with Doug and Don and Scott, um, and thank you for inviting me here today. I will try to talk as minimally as possible so that you can ask yeah, questions, right. because that's what it's all about. Um, but I did thank you so much for inviting me uh, to present because I actually put together some slides that I hadn't put together before um, for this presentation. So um, that was really nice. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen if I could. Still have it? I do, I think. There we go. Can everybody see that okay? Yep. Wonderful. Okay, so I'm here today to talk about whole communities um, as uh, from a plant rich diet perspective. But let me give you a little background first, because I'm sure that not all of you are familiar with the T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies. We are a nonprofit. We're committed to increasing awareness on all issues surrounding food and how food impacts not only our personal health, communal health, but also ecological health. So I feel in this group of people today that I am in the company of like-minded individuals and it feels good. So the T. Colin Campbell Center was established um, really based on Dr. Campbell's research, his lifelong research. Dr. Campbell is 89 years old now. He is still publishing. Um, he is still researching. Um, he wrote the China study. He wrote a book called Whole, and he wrote a book called The Future of Nutrition. If you haven't had a chance to read all three, they're phenomenal, and um, they really open our eyes to many different issues surrounding food. So that's really the background of who we are. And to give you an idea, um, for the longest time, we were just the plant-based nutrition certificate. Doug has gone through the plant-based nutrition certificate. Others have gone through it. I have. We have 20,000 graduates who have gone through a program that is called the plant-based nutrition certificate. And it's all based on Dr. Campbell's work of holism. And I am setting the stage here by explaining what holism is, because it is a term that he coined, and it means whole diet and its effect on the whole person. 
And it's really looking at whole foods working together with the body to achieve optimal health. And it's based on the concept that there is an infinite number of causes and factors that lead to disease, not just one simple cause. And now reductionism really is the current paradigm that we have today in nutritional science. And it really focuses on specific elements of a diet and their effect on a person, but actually a specific part of that person. And it's really looking at nutrients in the context outside of a whole food. It's kind of taking a metaphorical microscope and, and looking at individual nu nutrients. And what we've seen is that boom of that supplement industry because you can't really make a lot of money on fruits and vegetables, but you can if you put something in pill form. So our whole approach is holism. Let me see here, I'm trying to get the slide to advance. So I want to explain a little bit more about what our organization has done over the last two years. So we are trying to put holism into practice and we have a great start. So for years, we were only the plant-based nutrition certificate program, cranking out these graduates that were going into the world, fired up about changing the world, but we really had no mechanism by which to support those graduates. So Dr. Leanne Campbell, uh, Dr. Campbell's only daughter, uh, took over as our CEO two years ago, and the two of them sat down and thought, what can we do to put this work into practice around the world? And they came up with a program called Community Grants. So community grants is the embodiment of holism in practice. We give $500 to $5,000 micro grants to empower individuals in these three areas. So that community education and food literacy, access to healthy, affordable food, and regenerative food systems. We have given 54 grants to date, and they are all over the world, and they're doing a variety of different things using whole food plant-based nutrition at their core, whether that's in the classroom, whether that's in the home, or whether that is in a farm field. Now, we had something called the Plant Forward Workshop Series, which Doug and um, also Scott have spoken about, I'm sure, here in the past. But it was in 2021, and they were six weeks of two-hour workshops that featured our grant recipients. So it was 21 speakers. The majority of them were our grant recipients. And it was, what are they doing? What makes these projects so critical and how can they convey what they're doing so the people who are watching these workshops actually can take that information into their communities? We had over 500 attendees and what we did was we got together after those workshops and did some networking sessions and soon realized, oh no, we've only scratched the tip of the iceberg and people want more. They wanna to get together, they want to continue these conversations and they wanna take things to the next level, but they're not quite sure how to do it. So we regrouped for about six months and put together the concept of whole communities. Now, Doug and Don and Scott, I'm going to be um, wowing and amazing you very soon here with something very exciting that I think you're going to be thrilled about. Um, and that is we created whole communities and we thought, how can we do this around the world? Well, it has to be online because we can't do this in person. So what can we offer these people who want to do more? So we decided to research online platforms that could do this. But as you probably know, being in Rotary Clubs yourself, that's where the action happens. That's where the magic takes place. It's that face-to-face -face interaction. It's in your communities. And how are we gonna do that online? So we put a lot of time, thought, and effort into creating a core team of people that will reach out to new members of whole communities. So Whole Communities is a global online community, and we are a training ground and a support system for people from all over the globe who want to unleash the transformative power of that plant-rich lifestyle in their corners of the world. So the benefits are every month we have a monthly workshop featuring several of our grant recipients when they're talking about not just what they're doing, but how they're doing it so that the people can learn from them. We have lively discussion boards and every month we have special interest groups that meet. So there are three different 
well, actually, oh gosh, five different groups that are meeting right now. And they meet face-to-face -face once a month and discuss deeper issues surrounding access to healthy, affordable food, community education and food literacy, and regenerative food systems. Very similar to SRAG and the different task forces of Rotary. We also have networking events where people can just get together and just talk. Just before this meeting, I had a let's talk session. We have several per month where people just drop in. They might bring a challenge or a question or a problem, and we just talk about it. Like-minded people helping work through things for their peers. We have tons of educational resources that go along with our workshops, anywhere from 14 to 40 pages of additional resources that people can use to support what they learn in workshops. We also have peer support. It's people getting together and supporting one another and helping to move projects forward. So what does this online community look like? Because most of us are familiar with Facebook and Facebook can only go so far. And there's a lot of people who are very um, d disheartened by Facebook and aren't um, necessarily engaging with it in the way that they used to. This goes so much further and way beyond. So we have a shared living room is what I like to call it. It's the place, it's the family room where people get together. It's called the main feed where people talk about issues, they comment um, and they share information. Then I mentioned we have the special interest groups where you can kind of go off into those separate rooms and have deeper conversations about meaningful um, events and activities. Our workshops with the resources, um, we have the resources all set up before these workshops even take place. So people can learn, dig in. They then get to meet and ask the questions directly to the speakers because these sessions are live. And then all of them, of course, are recorded for people to listen to later. Members create profiles that say, hey, this is me. Um, I'm, I'm a stay at home mom and I do this or I'm an engineer and I work at this particular company. These are my interests. Here's why I'm interested in whole food plant based. And then they can also list where they live in the world. And that is so important because then people can get together with people who live close to them in their same geographic region. There's also features where people can chat behind the scenes. If you find someone that you really connect with, you can reach out to them and you can talk to them one on one privately, or you can also have group chats as well. So that's kind of an overview of what the platform looks like. But keep hitting the, the button here. You might be asking, what does it take to join? Well, Doug and Dawn and Scott, in your email at three o'clock today, we have changed to a whole new concept. Whole Communities is 100% free to enter. Um, it has been a paid platform up to this point. Um, we've had high, high rates of success with that, but we have determined that we are going to use another fundraising model. So everyone who is currently in whole communities will be receiving a refund for this last month because this is a new initiative um, and everyone can get in free. You provide your name and email address and then you'll be asked five basic screening questions just so that we can ensure that the people who are coming into the community are truly interested in being change makers and learning. And you can see those questions listed here. You wait for the approval, which basically means we have a team that goes through those, hit the button, and you're welcomed into the community by real people from all over the world who are our greeters. And they answer questions. Um, they can walk you through any questions that you have about um, the, the platform itself. And then you're all ready to start connecting, learning, sharing, and doing. So that's a big change. Um, and that will happen next week. Um, it is not, not currently the case. Um, but I will get that information um, to Doug, Don, and to Scott. And they can share that with everyone here so that you can join. You can look at the platform. Um, I'm going to thank you very much. Um, and I would highly encourage you to check it out yourselves. I am happy, as Doug mentioned, to come back to the next meeting or another meeting and actually show you what the platform looks like, walk you through the inside, show you the different features, um, and, and it might give you a much better understanding of just how rich the content and the connection is in this community. 
so hard to convey just talking about an online community. Uh, but you can get in there yourself, you can look around, and then this could be something that you can share with your Rotary Clubs as a way for people to connect with others on issues that are important to them about food, community, and the environment. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Hopefully I didn't take up too much time, Doug, um, but that okay. should leave quest rooms for questions. That's wonderful, Natasha. Thank you very much. Uh, I mm -hmm. think it's a, and what did I forget, Doug, or, or Scott, or Don? Is there anything that we've talked about that I did not mention? I think you did a fabulous uh, job of, of presenting. Um, okay. The only thing, I wish that we had more time to highlight some of the uh, programs and the workshops that have already been done, but maybe that's something that we could do in a later session so people can really get uh, an idea of the incredible depth and the w breadth of the programs that you all have been undertaking all, literally all around the world. And what I can do if we do another deeper dive, if people want to do that, um, I can bring that up on the screen and I can walk you through each of those workshops, show you the resource guides, um, the speakers, and really the content of those. But also for those of you who want to get in and test this out um, next week, what we can do um, is you can get in there and you'll be able to see for yourself what Doug is talking about as well. Uh, the one thing I did want to mention is that we can certainly set it up so there's a specific join link for Rotarians. And then that way you can actually see how many Rotarians are becoming members of the community and it will allow you to track that part of it. So I'm happy to sit yeah. down with anyone and work through that piece of it. I, so I, I think that sounds really yeah. interesting and, and really um, something that we would like to explore. Um, did, have you got partnerships with other um, organizations that you've sort of taking this out to in that sort of um, almost private branding sort of, or not private branding, but a, a, um, a, a enabling Rotarians to find other Rotarians with it. Are there other organizations that you, you do? We have, we, we've talked with a couple of other just organizations that are aligned with us. We have several plant-based nutrition graduates that are now involved with larger organizations at a, at a national level that have looked at that as well. But that way it's just really nice because you can track the information and we could get to a point too where you might be able to offer something specifically inside the community just for Rotarians. Like if you wanted to do a workshop or something specific, we may be able to work on that as well. There's a lot of customization and we're mm -hmm. on the cusp of this and have just started. We opened the community on March 8th and have been doing a very slow rollout to make sure that we can support all of the features and that we're working through any bugs that have cropped up. Um, so absolutely. Yeah, and I think we probably do have time if you want to just perhaps direct us. So with this group of people, do go and check out the website. Um, perhaps just give us a couple of um, highlight areas that we ought to go and, and check out to make it a little bit easier for people. Do you want to just give us a, a, a two minute tour? Sure. Please. You bet. We always quite like a little bit of Follow the bouncing ball to make it easier for us. <laughs> so we go to whole, wholecommunities.org. You do. The, my one challenge is um, I was asked to do this presentation by Doug uh, today, and we're not quite ready. Oh, to, okay. Uh, right. So well, I, I won't we... be able to give you this link until early next week, and maybe I can get it to Doug. He can get it to all of you. Um, okay, because right well, now it's still a paid platform and I and it will be switching over. So okay. this is what it looks like. Um, you're seeing my view as the host, so it's slightly different, but this is our living room area. And you can see that there's people talking about different conferences that are coming up, different opportunities for people to get involved in, people asking questions about wellness and health, and people are commenting here. Um, over here on the left, you have a list of the members and you can choose them by hosts. You can, um, any ones that are near you, um, the newest members who have just joined the group. Um, you also can go to an events tab. And as you can see, 
there are just countless events that you can attend and get involved in. Everything from repetitive orientation sessions. I do many orientation sessions per month to welcome people in and answer questions. And then all of our special interest groups, like here's a regenerative food systems monthly meeting. Um, here's the access to healthy, affordable food monthly meeting. And you can see there's lots of them coming up. Here is our plant-based schools. That's going to be a workshop that's coming up uh, the 1st of June. You can then see if you keep scrolling down here to, to July, we have Jumpstart uh, Health in your community, how to kick off a Jumpstart in your community, like the Plant Rich um, Jumpstart that was done by Rotary. And then over here on the left, you have groups. As I mentioned, you can join these groups. And if you join these groups, then you have your monthly meetings, you have discussion groups within each group. Um, and then we also have workshops. And Doug, let me just point out real quick the Plant Forward Workshop Series because all the content is in here. This was the six weeks, two hour workshops at a time. You yeah. come in, you get the series overview, you click on it and you get the background of all of the speakers that are in there. You then can go to the replay. So you hit the video and you can go to the replay of that entire session, including the Q&A. And then this is what Doug was talking about with the resource guides that go along with it. I know I'm going very quickly here, uh, but this one right here, it tells you how to use the resource guide, gives you a workshop overview and the takeaways. It then gives you a table of contents, gives you some resources that we recommend. And then by each speaker, they have given us their recommended resources so it has everything from book recommendations to films that people could watch to articles that people can read. They're extensively um, annotated. So there's some great information in here on topics. Uh, if I can get back here real quick. I'm on my small laptop here and that's not always the easiest. So this one right here was the how to do jump starts. This one here is about community building. This one was about planetary health and the future of food that touched on every topic having to do with the food system. This was about food sovereignty and different groups, how they're reclaiming their ability to grow their own food. Um, this one was healthy and um, affordable food, innovative ways to expand access to that food. Um, and these all featured our grant recipients. So it gives you kind of an idea there. We also um, then over here have a chat feature. And that's again, where you can chat with a variety of members about a variety of topics. Awesome so does that stuff. give you kind of a quick overview? Yeah, no, that's, that, that's good. And I think giving people a flavor so that it's just concretized it a bit is, was really helpful. And with some of those groups, uh, I imagine you can also form local groups. So if I'm here mm -hmm. in Melbourne, Australia, I could form a group and, and, and we could uh, drive things like that. Much business involvement or organisations in it as Not well? Not at this point. A, it's, it's really it's a, a person. Cons, yeah, yeah, it's, it's really person channel. to person, person. Yeah, at this yeah. point. Um, and it's really for those who want to do something in their communities. So it's not only support for them, but it's giving them the access to the resources and tools to take it to the next level, whatever that might be for them. Awesome. All yes. right. Any, any questions, folks? Thank you for your time, everyone. That was fabulous. Thank you. Natasha. Thank you, Natasha. It's amazing. Thank you very much. Looking forward to being part of the community. And Don, you snuck in. You you snuck in under the cover of darkness. I realized that you had joined. I I don't usually miss anyone. So, <laughs> how, how many people have you got on the platform as a paid paid platform at the moment? Right now, about two hundred. Yeah. Um. So I mean, we'll have thousands by the time we're yeah, done. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think but it's yeah. a good move to move it to an open open mm -hmm. model and look for other sources of revenue. Um, yep. So no, great. It's, well, it's, I look forward to any possibilities of partners and ways that you can think of. Hey, Manish, are you on mute? We can't hear you.
anybody else with questions? Now we're still sort of five or six before the, the top of the hour. As I said, I wouldn't mind circling back to Joe to let us know some of the things that he's been doing with Lunch Out of Landfill. But Manish, did, was there anything that, that you wanted to grab the microphone? No, my apologies. I actually went to reheat my lunch after a rotary meeting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and I left my uh, mute button unmuted. I apologize. Okay. Okay. No problem at all. All right. Well, uh, well, thank you. And, and yeah, I, I think um, with what we've just been hearing there, it would be really interesting to explore how Rotary might be able to help um, help drive more people onto the platform and have a bit of a, a, a presence um, there because uh, it looks like, you know, this is one of the things that we've struggled with a bit at ESRAG is getting this sort of the follow the bouncing ball, getting the resources, making it easy for people to, to find things. And it sounds like you've done all of the heavy lifting um, work with getting that platform up and um, up and running. So let's, let's explore how we might be able to collaborate. Great, thank you. All right, now, um, Michelle, over to, to you, whether a, a question here or one from earlier, we've uh, got some time before I'll pass to Joe. Just for Natasha, thank you for your excellent presentation. Do you have anything on comp on composting? Do, do you do anything on, on, on the health of the the soil? I mean, there's a big drive with in India also with Sadhguru on save the soil, with basically the next 50 years on the impact on saving the soil. And I think that getting that message and practical uh, examples we can use in, in schools and also for people in lockdown, because I've been speaking to our members in Shanghai who are really on a lockdown to try to help them during a six weeks lockdown, which might last another four weeks to help them. They only receive canned food from the government. Do you have any tips for them or links that I could share with the community in Shanghai? Thank you very much. You're, you're welcome. Um, so yes, we have a regenerative food systems group that focuses specifically on issues of composting, of soil, of um, regenerative farming techniques in general. And so that is one of our groups that's just getting up and started. This morning, um, we had several posts of upcoming summits and conferences that will be held specifically about that, that people were talking about attending. And then from our Plant Forward workshop series that I just mentioned, we also have several of our grant recipients that are working in school gardens, they're working in community gardens, they're also working on issues having to do with compost and using compost in a variety of different ways. So um, yes, in answer to your question, that is something that we are focused on because if we don't have soil health, we don't have human health, and we actually don't exist anymore. So it is incredibly important. Our um, CEO, Dr. Leanne Campbell, she runs an education center in the Dominican Republic, and she has a food forest on that property. And it is very near and dear to her heart, composting, food forests, permaculture, you name it, when it comes to soil building, regenerative agriculture. So we are very much moving in that direction. And Thank and you for your, your question. Just your revenue model. So you've got grant money going out. You obviously spend a bit of money building a platform um, there. How do you get supported? Sure. Um, so this, again, all of our initiatives are quite new within the last year, year and a half. Um, so we are going to be looking at a sustainer drive model at this point for our community grants. The beautiful thing about this online community is all of our community grants are members. So they are there sharing their resources, sharing their ideas, and people get to know them. And once they get to know our grant recipients, they already are wanting to help them. And how do we do that? And part of that is funding. So we will have two sustainer drives per year that will help to fund um, our community grants um, program. Uh, additionally, we do have our plant-based nutrition certificate that is the core of what our organization does. So that covers um, you know, uh, staffing and those kinds of things. So. Awesome. Now, I might get you to take yourself off screen share and we'll move to, to wrapping up the meeting. So last call for, for questions and then I'll, uh, I'll pass to Joe. All right. So you're